Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and a very, very warm welcome to Mr. Hakim Onibudo's 20-year story. Uh, my name is Kenneth Tharp. I'm chief executive of the place, uh, but I'm delighted to be up the road here this evening at Sadler's Wells. And in a way, but what better introduction could we have this evening to the man of the moment, the man of the night, Hakim? You've just seen his art, and during the course of this evening, you're going to see a lot more of his art. Um, but also, I hope, through the conversations I have with him, you'll get to know him a bit better through his words and thoughts. Now, Hakim um, is a man of many identities, so many, in fact, you could be forgiven for thinking he had a multiple personality disorder. Um, but actually, it's a real testament to the range of skills and talents. He's a dancer. He's a choreographer. He's a producer. He's a presenter. He's a director. He's a teacher. He's a mentor. He's a father. He's a father figure. He's a red carpet host. He's an ambassador, a leader, a facilitator. He's someone who makes a huge impact in so many ways, in so many lives. And I'm also pleased to say he's also a trusted colleague and friend. And before I ask the man of the moment to come onto the stage to join me, um, I want to be certain that you're ready to give him uh, the kind of uh, welcome that he deserves. And so as a test, uh, when I say impact, I want you to give me the loudest cheer you can. Ready? Impact. Good. Yes, you can add the clapping too. Yeah. <laughs> That's very nice. I'm sure that'll make him very happy. Um, ladies and gentlemen, please give the warmest, uh, most loved up, uh, biggest welcome you can to Mr. Hakim Onubudo. Hakim, we've just seen, you've just seen one of your pieces. Yep. Tell us about the first piece Tell and why you chose to start piece. the evening with that piece. Oh, man. Um, I started that piece because, I don't know, actually, quite iconically, uh, the beginning piece of music from the Shawshank Redemption, um, we used it for, I think, one of the most iconic um, youth pieces of work we've ever done. We worked with Greenwich Dance. Big up Greenwich Dance inside the place. I know they're in the place. Um, we did some work with Woolwich Polytechnic. Uh, they formed a group called Radical, and they did an amazing performance in 2010 at Sadler's Wells. And that was the opening of their, of their piece. And I felt that's going to start um, this show tonight. Um, and then I thought I'd just give you a little tease, a little taster of the ability and the style of the dancers who have just been amazing all week. And they've got so much to share with you this week. So that was the choice. Brilliant. OK. And um, listen, it, it, with hindsight, anything can seem um, inevitable. Mm. Uh, you've done so much in the last 20 years, but um, were you always dancing? How and when did dancing come into your life? Um, I was always dancing. I kind of, back with brothers and sisters, um, to kind of give away my age now, but anyone who knows um, Greg, Greg Edwards and Soul Spectrum, um, on a Saturday night, he just used to play music. And my brothers used to be dancing in front of the mirror. My sisters used to be dancing in front of the mirror. And I'd just be dancing with them, just dancing around their feet. You know, I was quite small. I'd be like, just, just doing moves. And before you know it, it becomes in, embedded in you. It just becomes a groove. And that was the start of it. Then there was a progression. Um, at university, I started a piece of work with the Afro-Caribbean Society. We presented it. And that was kind of like the taste for, for teaching and giving people an opportunity what, to what express. What were you studying at university? I was studying biological, biological, biological science, biochemistry, basically. Where were you doing that? At the University of Hull. Yeah. OK. Yep. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Big up Floyd in the man. <laughs> so were you, were you thinking about a career in dance at that stage? No. No, I wasn't. What were your aspirations? Then? The aspirations were just to try and escape from academia, to be honest with you. I felt <laughs> there was so much pressure in terms of um, you've got to get this grade, you've got to get that grade, and then from there you move on. I just, I didn't realise at those early stages, but I was a people person. I like to see people um, realise their potential, unlock their potential, and do, um, do the best they could in whatever they wanted to do. So it wasn't even about a career. I mean, I, c I couldn't mention dance as a career in my household. People would just be like, what? What are you talking about? No. So what was the significant moment when, when, did, when did dance start to be, take on another importance in your life, another level? So it's from dancing in the clubs as well, long, alongside friends. Um, then a crazy thing happened in 1995. I went to pick up something from uh, a lady who was working at reception. 
a lady called Nadam Amanin, who's a brother, sorry, sister of a good friend of mine. And I went to pick up something. Hi, she's in the audience. Hey. <laughs> hey. Uh, I went to pick up something. And when I, how dance works is set up, obviously, as you walk in, you've got Studio 10. And Dolly Henry was teaching a professional jazz class. I just stopped. saw these people turning, spinning, and kicking. And I was like, wow. And that then connected with, with the work I did at the Afro-Caribbean Society. And I thought, you know what? What if I could teach a class? So um, to cut a long story short, I left. This was before mobile phones. Um, I remember the 10p I took out of my pocket in St. John's Wood, put it in the phone box, rang up Danceworks and said, can I speak to the main person in charge? Um, I got through to them and I said, I want to teach a class. So she said, OK, what qualifications have you got? And I said, look, actually, I like to present myself in person rather than on the phone. So can I get an appointment with you? She was like, this guy's crazy, but yeah, OK. Um, went to see her two days later, mm. and then three month, um, about a month after that, started the first Express Yourself class. Didn't know what I was doing, but started the first class and started to build momentum. And it was then that I realized that this is what I wanted to do because I was working um, parallel in social services full time. I was a daycare social worker. And during the day, I'd be like, oh gosh, clock watching, etc. cetera. Um, but in the evening, for my first, I'd just come alive on a Friday night. I just became a different person. So I sat down and analysed it and thought, well, you know, I want to do things when I've got a smile on my face rather than when I haven't got a smile on my face. So that's where I think the passion of teaching people started. You, um, you have three companies, Impact, Impact Youth and Fully Functioning Individuals. That's correct. Tell me about the names of those and, why, and what, what, they what they will tell us about your mindset <laughs> and how you're thinking about so it. Impact, when I was thinking of a, a name for the company, is so make an impact on people, not just make an impact on, um, not just make an impact on, on the audience, but also make an, an impact on people in terms of what they, how they perceive everything around them. Um, so that was the base name. Then obviously we had the young guys, um, so we call that the youth company, Impact Youth. But fully functioning individuals is really interesting. Um, I spoke to a, a dancer, uh, a famous dancer, Dwayne Taylor, um, who's done a lot, uh, doing some amazing things. And um, I asked him kind of what, is it, what was it about impact that he liked. And he, he said he feels that, you know, what we do, the vehicle allows individuals to become fully functioning individuals in society. I was just like, wow. I was like, I have to use that, man. To so, and then just looking at the demographic of people that came and were training and doing stuff, they, it's every, different cross-sections of people doing different things at different stages of their life, but I kind of felt that everyone was really getting something out of it, so Fully Functioning Individuals became the name of the group, which is not a full-time group in terms of full-time dancers, but we come together project-based and we train uh, once a week for three hours. 